So Dashakam 1, if all of you remember, Bhatta 3 now, we all know the basis. Bhatta 3 is crying in pain. At that time, Altachan, he comes, he tells him, in the introductory class, we are already seeing this, he tells you start from Matsya, start from the fish. At that time, Bhatta 3 gets an idea that, okay, I have to start from Matsya Avatara, then talk about the glories of the Lord. But then he feels that directly talking about Matsya Avatara will not help. Before that, I have to specify something about the Lord, how creation started and so on. It's just as if some topic is given to us. Maybe you have just like a speech, elocution competition or so. Some topic is there. We don't directly start right from that. We give some introduction. Then we come to the main topic and then we finally conclude. So the same thing happens here. So Bhattatri also does that. That's how you would have seen right from the Shakam 1 till the Shakam 100. Initially, he talks about a few topics. Then the main avatara starting, Krishna Leela stories start. Again, the last 10 dashakams, like they are a bit philosophical, they talk about tattva, jnana, bhakti, that is various methods that are used. So, this is a proper order in which all the dashakams have been divided. So, the right way, just as we have a speech to be narrated or you have to write a question answer or so, how we, or even a sum that we do in maths, some problem, you have some conclude, you have an introduction, like theorem, especially in geometry, those are familiar. You have the theorem, then you show the main working, then you have the proof. Hence proved we write, right? And so on. So that way for why this method has been told is give an introduction, then the main body, then the conclusion. So the same thing, the introductory part starts with Dashakam 1. Now Dashakam 1 is now, if you see, it is on the basis of Srimad Bhagavatam. So therefore, just as in Srimad Bhagavatam Skanda 1, Shuka has described the same way Bhattatri also has described. So Bhagavat Swarupam Mahat Nimcha, meaning the form of the Lord. And what is the significance? Bhattatri writes here as per the Bhagavatam. So make a note of this. And the same thing, same meaning has been told in Dashakam 100. But then now in Dashakam 100, Bhattatri has actually witnessed the Lord in front of him. So that description he writes in 100. Some people say Dashakam 1 and 100 is the same. What is different? Why you have to dedicate two Dashakams? There is a difference. Dashakam 1 is as per what Bhattatri had read in Srimad Bhagavatam that he has interpreted. Dashakam 100 is he sees a lord himself in front of him and that description, that experience he says, is the reason he says Romanchi Tangrahi, says I cannot express my hairs are standing erect. I cannot believe that I am seeing the lord in front of me. But at least, luckily, because he was but a three, he at least stayed there. If it was one of us, we will run away. Even if the lord comes in front of us, it's a, he, we will never say Agre Pashyami. He at least witnessed because he had the belief that one fine day the lord will come. All of us, how much ever we are great bhaktas, we wish that the Lord should come. Or we always we know what God, God, people tell, as if I can see him with my eyes. But one fine day, if the Lord really comes, even if he says that, yes, I am Krishna, I am Rama, you prayed for all these years, we will run away from there. Thinking that this is some fraud person, you will go and beat him or you yourself will run away. Because we have the belief that the Lord will never come. We can only see him in temples, idols and so on. So this was, this is a difference. This is the amount of bhakti that Bhattatri had and that description. So you just imagine that situation. Still the 100 dashakam, therefore the 100 dashakam is full of emotions. Finally, after 99 days of pain, wherein Bhattatri could not move even his limb, when one limb of the body, it is said that Bhattatri could not walk at all. People used to lift him and bring about. And even if people used to lift him, so much of pain he used to experience, even if one body part also will not move. A kind of leprosy you can consider, at least leprosy patients, they can walk. Their fingers and toes are a bit, you can say, twisted, but still they can walk. But Tatri could not even walk and all this happened at the age of 27. So you just imagine, so life is short, right? We never know what will come when, but at the age of 27, but Tatri, he had uh, return this but luckily with God's grace within 100 days he was cured and then he composed many other texts in fact Bhattatri has composed something even in praise of goddess Durga is anyone aware of that there is a stotram which is composed by Bhattatri himself in praise of goddess Durga if we get an opportunity we will learn that so Bhattatri has composed like this many other texts not only for the lord of Gurvayu but many other texts so with this, Dashakam 1 starts, wherein in Dashakam 1, mainly he talks about the Supreme or reality. So here, if you see, he does not describe the Lord in the form, you can say like a form. Okay, this is Krishna, this is Rama, this is Ganesha. So when we say Krishna, what comes to our mind is you have a flute in hand, Pitambaram, yellow clothes, the Mayura Picham, the peacock feather and so on. Rama, bow and arrow in hand. Ganesha, the elephant face. Muruga, you have a veil in hand. 
and so on. Shiva, it will be a Jata or maybe a Shivaninga. How come, now whenever I say Shiva, immediately a picture gets created, right, in your minds. How come? Because we are used to that. We see, we remember the Lord in that form. But here in the first chapter, Bhattatri says that the Lord does not have any form. That energy that we can witness around, that is nothing but the Supreme, that is Tattva. Sandranandatva Bodhat. Bodhat is... I am understanding it this way, that it, this is that nature. It is nothing but supreme, full supreme consciousness. Consciousness is nothing but energy that is there, which I can feel around me. I don't need some form. Uh, for human beings, it becomes difficult. That's the reason some form is told Krishna, Rama, Ganesha, Goddess, Guru and so on. Until and unless we see something with our eyes, we cannot interpret. But beyond that also, the Lord is there. Idol worship has just come in. But beyond that also, like sages, yogis and so on. Like even Krishna describes in the Gita, different ways of reaching in the Lord. Bhakti Yoga is just one of them. So therefore, the, that Lord which has got no form, it is pure bliss, pure consciousness. That is Tattvam. Tattvam is nothing but that concept. That is a true reality. That is the reason why many things are not answered. Sun rises every day in the east. Every day it sets in the west. Trees at the right time they shed their leaves. Right time they are green. Like rivers they keep flowing. A river will never stop. Right? It will never be still. It has to flow continuously. Every day things happen. The moon rises at the time. Moon sets. Never ever the nature is disturbed. Like this there are many. Of course there are many scientific reasons. Beyond that also. Things do lie on hope. So that hope, faith is nothing but Tattvam. So therefore, here what Bhattatri says is, Tattavad Bhati Saksha Guru Pavana Pure Hantabhagyam Janana. So here he says that this very form of supreme consciousness, reality, whatever people call, I can see that in front of me in this image of the Lord of Guru Vayu. Now Bhattatri was sitting exactly opposite the main sanctum, the main uh, shrine of Guru Vayu. So therefore he sees that whatever people say, all this is reality, consciousness, supreme. All this tattva that is there. That I can see in front of me in this image of the Lord of Gurvayu. And this is nothing but Hanta Bhagyam Janana. Bhagyam is good fortune of people. So people for whom it becomes difficult so to interpret and to think about the Lord in various, without having a form for them. The Lord of Gurvayu has made a place like this by giving, showing, giving his darshana, giving a good place, giving darshana to the Lord in the form of Gurvayu. So if anyone wants to come and witness the supreme reality, he must come to Gurvayu. And in verse 1 itself, when Bhattatri told this, Krishna made it reality. That's the reason for after every Dashakam, Krishna used to come in front of him and nod his head saying that everything is going good. Please keep doing your good work. Please continue. Why Krishna did this? To assure Bhattatri that what he was doing is right. Secondly, Bhattatri got a belief that someone is listening to what I'm doing. Now, if someone tells us to do something, only when someone comes and appreciates and only when someone tells us, you have to do this, we do, right? On our own, ah, okay, let me see. I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it day after. We keep postponing. So, therefore, Krishna did this to assure Bhattatri that, yes, I'm listening to what you're saying. With this, Bhattatri got a hope. He got hope that I will surely be cured. Second objective of the Lord coming and nodding his head was, after Bhattatri, crores and crores of devotees are going to learn the sacred text. They will also be freed from their worries. So Bhattatri is like a medium. Just as Arjuna was a medium for the Gita, Narayanim, Bhattatri is a medium for Narayanim. That's the reason the Lord himself came there and used to nod on all the hundred days to tell and to show the world that, show Bhattatri that what you are doing is good. Please keep continuing. So with this verse one concludes. Further, Bhattatri continues, he says that such things are very, very rare. The Lord, now people and yogis, if you see, they crave for years and years together for darshana. They keep praying. They will stand on one leg, one toe and so on. So much of tapasya, everyone does. But then oh, the Lord of Gurvayur has made things so easy for all of us that he, has, he is giving us darshana in the place called Gurvayur in front of us wherein we can actually experience a lot. This is nothing but our own good fortune. So therefore, I have to just surrender. But the thing is, people don't realize this. They are fully attached in their worldly life. They cannot realize. That's the reason why none of us comes here. None of uh, the people come here to the Lord of Gurvayur. None of them, they take darshana. None of them chant his names. That's because they are busy in their own lives. But the Lord, he has made his place here. He has come all the way from Dwaraka. If you see the Lord of Gurvayu, this image of Lord Krishna was worshipped by Lord Krishna himself. It was bought by two of his devotees, Guru and Marut. And that's how it was placed in the place called Guruvayu. So that, and even the Lord Shiva also has moved. Originally it was Mamiur. Where today you have the Mamiur Shiva temple, right? 
Gurvayur place, it was actually Lord Shiva who was staying there along with Parvati. When the Lord himself came there, Shiva shifted nearby to today's place called Namiur. And that's how the Lord of Gurvayur's temple, the Lord of Gurvayur was established there. A temple was constructed there. So therefore, Matatri says that because people, in spite of having such an image of the Lord here in Gurvayur, people are fully engrossed in their own material life. That's the reason their life is full of sorrows. Further, he says this, the Lord is nothing but fully Sattva Gunam. Sattvam yat tatparabhyam, verse 3. Sattva gunam is nothing but righteousness. Everything is just good. Sattva rajas tamas. These are three gunas. Sattvam, 100% good things. That is, you can say, yogis, the Lord, and also few of us. Few of us, of course, human beings, we are not too much of sattva, but still, little sattva. That is good qualities. Rajogunam, medium. I'll give you a very simple example. Now, all of us, sattva gunam is, now all the three gunas are present in everyone. Now all of us, because we are learning and maybe you are listening to the Narayanya, Sattva Gunam is at, at its peak. You are doing everything good. Someone comes and maybe is irritating you or trying to disturb you. Once or twice you tell them, go, I am listening, I am doing something. Third time what you do is, you hit the person saying, this is slightly you hit the person saying that, go away, don't disturb me. So you see from Sattva Gunam, little you got distracted, little anger peaked in, that is Rajo Gunam, this Rajas came in. Tamo guna, maybe you are fighting with someone, you are hitting someone, you get into an argument, you insult someone. There is no goodness at all. You go away. So basically, Rajogunam you can consider as tit for tat mentality. Most of the human beings come in this category. But we have to always aim towards Sattva Gunam. Vatatri says the Lord is full of Sattva Guna, fully pure. There is nothing which the Lord doesn't have. Right? That's the reason I told you this, I don't remember. Rukmini herself once, when she playfully asked Krishna, whom do you worship? You must practice what you preach. To tell everyone that you you have to worship the Lord. You told Arjuna also regarding Bhakti Yoga and everything. You yourself are not doing. What is the use? Then yeah, like you should also worship, right? You must practice what you preach. Then why you are <clears throat> why do you tell others to do things? So then at that time Krishna was in a confusion. He felt that what she is telling is actually true. Then whom should I worship? Because there is none, none who is beyond me, right? Who is greater than me. Now this was not pride again. Then that is the ultimate truth. So then, um, but then Rukmini says this, she told it very playfully, but then Krishna took it seriously and that's the reason the Lord of Gurvayur, the image of Gurvayur is said that it was worshipped by Lord Krishna himself. He used to worship himself. Now this is like, not like Hiranyakashipu, wherein Hiranyakashipu built temples, he told everyone, chant Hiranyakashipu Ave Maha, it is not like that. But then to show to the world that worship, bhakti is very, very important. And therefore for the Lord also, there is none who is beyond him, but still he has lived like a man. That's the reason when he was Naravatara, he did, in the form of Rama, he did Shiva Puja many places. Krishna also, if you see, they had the Govardhana Puja and so on. Lord can very easily say, I am the Lord, why should I do? But still, even though he knew that he ruled over everyone, still during that Avatara, he has uh, done the proper duties that are there. Because looking at that, the world is going to follow. So therefore, Bhattatri says that there is none beyond you. There is nothing more pure, uh, fully, full of Sattva Guna. This has been told by Vyasa. Why he says Vyasa? Because Vya Narayanam is a condensation of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is compiled, which is compiled by Vyasa, all the Puranas. Srimad Bhagavatam is one of that. So therefore, he says Vyasa and many other sages. They have told this again and again. And this entire Narayanam, it is very much, you can say even to the years also, it is very peaceful to listen and just by looking at you in your form at the temple of Gurvayur, people will be very, very happy when they come here. They will experience only bliss and happiness. Further, he says that you, you cannot be changed at all. You are ever full. That is, no changes can be done. Your grandfather also worshipped Krishna. You are also worshipping Krishna. Your future generation will also worship Krishna, right? No, my grandfather used to worship Krishna without a flute. I am worshipping Krishna. Now, recently, I got to know that Krishna also has got a flute. And tomorrow, you see, you know, Krishna doesn't have a flute. He has something else in his hand. This doesn't happen, right? Right from the time of Krishna Avatara, Krishna is known with a flute. Today, also, we know the same form. Tomorrow, also, it is going to be the same. That is changeless. The Lord is never going to change. And... This is, people say that Anshavatara, Anshavatara, Purnavatara. In verse number 4, if you see, Kasma no Nishkalastvam, Nishkala is nothing but Purnavatara. So, Krishnavatara is Purnavatara. Why Purnavatara? Because the Lord, though he was born, now what's the difference between Ramavatara and Krishnavatara? Ramavatara, Rama was born as a man. Krishnavatara, Krishna was also born as a man. But then at many instances, he tried to reveal himself as the Lord. 
as a reason right from the time he was born he showed his divine powers he killed putana he killed chakrasura tranavarta and so on right whereas rama did not do that he behaved as a human being only that's the reason now when sita got abducted if he was the lord he could have shown his powers right he could have immediately gone maybe shot an arrow or something bring back do some magic and bring back sita he didn't do that he cried up for his wife he asked the mountains he asked the rivers everything he went about like a human being normal human being would do he saw the help of monkeys he behaved like a man whereas krishna avatar is purna avatar wherein the lord was a man but he revealed his divine form divine powers also that's the reason patatri asked that why we should not even call the lord avatars as amsha amsha is maybe hanuman also it's an amsha avatar of shiva this one part of shiva is present in hanuman or even adi shankaracharya so this is the difference whereas krishna is none but purna avatar of the lord himself further he says that patatri says that you are the one who is not born at all but still for the sake of for the sake of your devotees you take avatar again and again and what you do is but still you are fully pure that is unlike human beings when we are born in this world we get attracted towards different things we are afflicted by different problems also you don't do that that is you are not affected by maya that is there you are fully satvik therefore and this happens do at the time of creation when the creation of the world has to start in you are fully your form is free from maya and if people also worship you in such a divine form in the form of lord krishna this form of lord gurvayur they will surely attain vaikuntham further your form is very very fresh perun goddess mahalakshmi also resides in that lakshmi nishanka leela nilagana verse number 6 lakshmi the goddess mahalakshmi also resides there and your form is so fresh as if the rainy season is just about to start clouds are waiting to pour their rains this is your forms so that's the reason why i feel so blessed further he says that for you this creation that is there is a very easy game that is after yoga nidra when you are sleeping in yoga nidra at the time of pralaya when the world is about to end then you start brahma with the help of brahma you start the process of creation for you it is very easy but then it is actually leading to the sufferings of human beings why he tells us this because he was born and he is suffering now from a grave disease that's the reason why bhattatri highlights and this is the reason why all of us also have various problems in life right so but then so creation if someone is born he even he is going to have troubles sufferings and so on but then but a three year very beautiful meaning he says in verse 7 kashta te srishti cheshta but a three says i used to feel till some time back that this birth itself is a great suffering why am i even born sometimes we also feel right why am i even born should i am i born to just suffer all this it's better if i die right or if it's better if i was not born such thoughts do come to us but now bhattatri says that no more it comes to me because this human form has been given no change va katham va madhura taram idam he says that this human birth has been given to me to enjoy the sweetness and beauty that is there in listening to your stories to coming and visiting on your temples and finally to behold your form in front of me so therefore it is so and there pitwa paramarasa paramarasa this is going to give me ultimate bliss ultimate happiness so no longer i feel that my life though other suffering troubles are going to come for me the higher side or you can say the list or uh, the ba- if there is a balance if you compare between sorrows troubles and good things that happen for me always the good things or experiencing your beauty experiencing the rasa that is there that will be on the higher side so therefore now onwards though i am suffering my life is full of sufferings still i will not consider my birth to be a curse at all i will consider this human birth to be a blessing so this is a very very important verse from our life also we must always look at this everyone has got problems everyone has got troubles but then there are so many other good things that happen maybe all of us we come together we came together right this itself is a very good thing we came to know each other and this and so many things that happen so always look on the bright side of things as we say the grass is always green on the other side same thing bhattatri explains here further he says that namranam sannidatte namranam being humble those who surrender on your feet those who just come and pray to you without asking for any desires you always bless them because you are like the parijata tree parijato niravadika phala parijato hare tvam verse number 8 parijato just like the parijata tree it's a heavenly flower it fulfills unlimited boons are given you are similar to that but then people you are actually like the parijata tree wherein you don't have a 
you can say unlimited boons you will bestow but then the people are so ignorant the devotees are ignorant that they will ask for small blessings i want a house i want some money i want a car i want this i want that like the kalpaka tree from indra's garden kalp kshudram tam chakravati chakra indra from his garden vati so it is kshudram kshudram is small blessings they will ask but you are the one who will bless us with the best not for just trivial things here and there but with ultimate grace and bhakti towards you this is what we need wealth i can put in efforts and get house i can put in but satsang a company of good people at the same time bhakti or happiness or positivity peace of mind all this is something which i ultimately need no use of having wealth this that and everything if i don't have happiness and bliss so vatatri said tells that people don't understand this they want they don't long for paramananda they just long for small kshudram kshudram is small blessings from the kalpaka tree of indra's garden unlike the parijata tree from your garden in vaikuntham we'll just complete this dashakam then we'll stop further he says a karunya kama manyam i hope it is fine right for everyone if we complete the dashakam yes okay ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes yes okay so here ultimately verse number 9 uh, bhatatri says that oh lord, the lord of krishna out of compassion you fulfill the devotees of all uh, you fulfill the blessings or you fulfill the wishes of all your devotees you ultimately also lead them to moksha that is you bless them always with the best this is what i can just ask you you are the inner controller of everyone at that time you bless everyone with prosperity aishwarya adeshate ne and so therefore you bless everyone with everything but still the devotees keep asking so this is your guna that is a very good quality that is there with you without devotees asking also you bless them those devotees who come and surrender at your feet with your karuna with your compassion in spite of devotees doing a lot of papa karma sins still you try to save them always you try to bless them with the best last line he says that right from lord shankara onwards that is lord shiva onwards along with shiva brahma and all the other gods you are ruling over all the three worlds and you have the strength to rule all the three worlds at the same time god is lakshmi anga sanga sada shrihi akhila shrihi prosperity or god is mahalakshmi another word for god is lakshmi shrihi she also resides always in your bosom you are the one who's always present there is not even slightest attachment that is maya but this world does not delude you at all that is your pure bliss so therefore this bhagavan this theme is completely applicable to you tadvatagaravasin murahar bhagavat shabda mukhya shrayo so bhagavan is something which is omniscient that is which will be ple- present in all the three worlds one who always excels wherever he goes and the strength that is there to rule over the world so all supreme qualities this is the definition of bhagavan the first chapter is bhagavat swarupam mahatmyam cha first dashakam so you truly are a person who has all these qualities therefore rightly you can be called as bhagavan with this dashakam one ends